want to call the Thursday, November the 5th, 2020 Davis County Fiscal Court meeting to order. Commissioner Castle, would you lead us in a prayer and a pledge? I will. Dear Heavenly Father, we pause and we thank you for the many blessings you bestowed upon us as a community and as a nation. We ask you to bless us this evening and bless our nation, dear Lord, as we're many of us are anxious about the presidential election and, and the outcome. We just ask you to bless us and draw us together as a people, dear Lord. We also know there are many people in our community and across our nation and in our commonwealth that are suffering from the COVID. We ask you to bless them, bless their families. Just be with them and heal them, Lord, if you would see fit to do so. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit to guide us this evening as we do the work of the citizens of Davis County. May what we do be pleasing to you. We pray these things in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Commissioner Castlin. Anyone in here that wants to take the jacket off, it's rather warm, so I am going to do that. Well, as you know, I'm one of those cold natured people, so I'm going to just. I keep understand that they, they wrote a song about you. Uh, I would uh, also, I wore my mask just to let everyone know that we are in the red zone now, and we're pretty deep into the red zone. Davis County had 53 cases today which is, I think, the high by 10 cases, if I'm not mistaken. So, um, hey, wear your mask, socially distance, uh, wash your hands, and avoid large crowds. Now, we're meeting here in fiscal court. Public is not allowed and probably will not be allowed in till at least the first of the, the new year, if then. But we are all socially distanced and spread out so that, that we don't believe that we uh, have any risk. The first item on the uh, agenda tonight is consideration for presentation. Uh, proclaim November 14th, 2020 as Diabetes Awareness Day. Whereas more than 34.2 million Americans, including over 474,500 Kentuckians, or 13.7% of all adults, have diabetes, which makes Kentucky the eighth highest in the United States for the prevalence of diabetes, a serious disease that has no cure, and an additional 158,200 adult Kentuckians are estimated to be living with undiagnosed diabetes. And whereas an estimated 34.2 million Americans have been diagnosed with diabetes, and another 7.3 million people nationwide are unaware that they have the disease, and 84.1 million Americans, including 1.1 million uh, in Kentucky, are estimated to have prediabetes, a condition that puts people at increased risk for diabetes. Whereas diabetes costs Kentucky over $5 billion in total medical costs, lost work and lost wages each year. And whereas Kentucky has the fifth highest diabetes mortality rate in the nation and is associated with complications that threaten both length and quality of life, such as blindness, heart disease, kidney failure, stroke, and leg or foot amputations. And whereas an increase in community awareness of risk factors and symptoms related to diabetes can improve the likelihood that people with diabetes will get the attention they need before developing the disease and its devastating complications. Now, therefore, I, Davis County Judge Executive Al Mattingly, do hereby proclaim Saturday, November 14th, 2020, as Diabetes Awareness Day in Davis County, Kentucky, and urge all citizens to help fight this disease and its life-threatening complications by increasing awareness of the risk factors for diabetes, making healthy lifestyle choices, and providing care and treatment for those suffering with diabetes. So this proclamation will be sent to uh, the folks with the Diabetes Association. And I think probably I could say that every one of us knows at least one person, if not more, who have diabetes or who have developed diabetes or even children who were born with diabetes and have had to live with that disease all the life. Uh, so it's something that we should all be aware of and make every effort 
uh, to, if we have it, to control it. And, no, and the second thing is type 2 diabetes often is reversible with diet and, and exercise and those types of things. So anyway, item two, consideration for approval. A, minutes of the October 15, 2020, Davis County Fiscal Court meeting. Move to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second. Commissioners, you've all had a copy of the minutes in your possession for some time. Any additions, deletions, or corrections? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item B, all claims for all departments. Motion approved. Second. second. I have a motion second. Again, commissioners, you've all had a copy of the bills due and payable by Davis County Fiscal Court in your possession. Uh, any questions of the treasurer at this time? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item C, Memorandum of Understanding with the City of Owensboro and Owensboro Christian Church for the 2020-2021 White Flag events. Move to approve. Second. I have a motion second. Commissioners, I want to first thank Andy Ball for taking this task in hand. This year, uh, St. Benedict's, as you're aware, St. Benedict's and uh, the city and Davis County Fiscal Court worked really well together last year. Uh, part of the issue is a homeless shelter doesn't have a lot of spare room for social distancing, and we certainly don't want to be bringing COVID into the homeless shelter, causing it to close down. So in, in consultation with uh, Harry Pedigo and, and some other folks, it was just felt that perhaps we look for a new location this one year. Uh, the Owensboro Christian Church stepped up to the bat. We've negotiated a contract. It's pretty much like the contract that we had with, uh, with uh, St. Benedict's. Uh, the city of Owensboro and Davis County Fiscal Court will split the cost. Uh, and all of you are aware that white flag is declared when the temperature uh, is 15 degrees or when the uh, wind chill factor is 15 degrees or less. If we're having snowstorms, rainstorms, all those things go into it. So any question or comment? I just uh, would, would like to thank uh, both St. Benedict's and also Owensboro Christian Church yes. for, for their uh, assistance over the years. And, and, and you know, I really do, um, again, I want to thank uh, Andy Ball. Uh, when Andy came here, he kind of took the mm -hmm. homelessness, the white flag thing in hand and negotiated with various organizations and really kind of shepherded it himself. And yes. I, I appreciate that, Andy. Any other question or comment? There being none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. The next item on the agenda, item D, a memorandum of agreement between the Commonwealth of Kentucky, Department for Local Government, and Davis County Fiscal Court for a Horse Fork Creek Park Accessible Playground. Motion approved. Second. I have a motion second. Jordan, are you going to talk about this? Yes, Judge. This First, is... before you get started, let me tell you how delighted I am that we finally have this before us and are able to vote on it. Yes, sir. This is the $75,000 match grant for the inclusive accessible playground to be installed at Horse Fork Creek Park. We are still pending a federal tribal review that is estimated to be completed when those offices open back up in January of 21, at which point we can begin the bid process. I would estimate It'll take roughly a month for the bidding process, an additional month or so for installation, weather permitting. Uh, I've reviewed this document. It is in order, and I would recommend approval. Question or comment, commissioners? Well, for me, it's pretty exciting uh, that we are finally at this point once again. I mean, we thought we got here, and then we figured out that we kind of jumped the gun and had to start all over. And then COVID has actually delayed us for what? nine months, 12 months. Uh, for those who don't know, Playground for All is a playground where folks of, of, of all abilities can come and, and play. Uh, you know, oftentimes you'll see kids who might be in wheelchairs, how in the world do they get on a swing? Or how do they get on a merry-go-round? This playground equipment uh, allows that to happen. It allows them to to blend in with the rest of the kids and and be a real kid for a little while. The the 
other thing that's exciting is this is probably, I would say, uh, Commissioner Wathen, this is the last phase of our Horse Fork Creek renovation. When we get this, when we get this in place, get the new bathrooms, the the real live bathrooms, not the porta potties, in place, then we will have completed. Uh, other than just a few things, uh, we will have completed that renovation, and and I, I think that Horse Fork Creek Park will end up being, on a day to day basis, the most used facility that we have because of its location. Mm -hmm. I mean, it actually is in a. You know, it's abutted a on a couple sides by county and on a couple sides by city, and it's really in an urban area where there are a lot of kids. So I know it was used a lot last year. It was used a lot this year. So to me, it's exciting that we can put that one behind us and look at another project. If there are no other questions or comments, uh, and Jordan, thank you for writing heard on this. Thank you. There are no other questions. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Most carries. Next item, item F, Kentucky Emergency Management Assist Program Non-Planning Certificate Certification Grant Funds. Motion approved. Second. second. I have a motion and a second. Andy <clears throat> wanted to be here. I told him that there was no need for him to be. After I looked at this one, I wish I'd told Andy to be here. But in, in effect, it's an agreement with uh, with the uh, uh, military, and you know I jumped ahead, didn't I? Yes. All right. Well, let's do this one. We'll go back. It's a this one is a, an agreement with Kentucky Emergency Management Assist Program and and the military that says the federal funds that we get to assist REMA will not be used to supplant or replace funds that we normally would use these funds would be in addition to the funds that we would use. So um, other than that, it's a good thing. It's a good deal. We already have emergency management budget. These would be extra funds that we could get and bring in and, and use for various emergency management uh, operations. Any question or comment? There being none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next item, we'll jump back to E, a memorandum of agreement between the Commonwealth of Kentucky Military Affairs Division of Emergency Management and EMA regarding 2020 EMA program funds. Move to approve. Second. second. Move to approve. I hear I have a motion to approve and a, a second. And again, I would tell you, there's. I wish Andy was here. He could explain it better than me. But basically what I think it says is there's about $3 million dollars in funds that are available through military affairs to assist various emergency management organizations. And what we're doing with this agreement is saying we're going to use them in the right manner. It's, it's just like an agreement we would have with the federal government that says we won't discriminate, we won't do X, Y, and Z. Uh, I don't know that we will use any of the money, but if, there, if it becomes necessary, it's nice to know that it's there. Any question or comment? There being none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next item, item G, award the following bids. RFQ 12-2025 five sets of turnout gear for fire rescue. RFQ 13-2020 emergency lighting for rescue units, fire rescue. RFQ 14-2020 trailer floor repair. That's the walking trailer floor repair. Uh, transfer station, uh, RFQ 15-2020, EOC AV equipment relocation. That's uh, that's the uh, equipment that they use for uh, audio <coughs> and uh, video uh, for emergency management. As you remember, down in the basement, we used to have that. We're moving them in the Scherzinger building, and it's just uh, refurbishing it. Bid number 43-2020, one new Class A fire engine for fire rescue at Mosleyville. Bid number 45-2020, county courthouse renovation here in the fiscal court uh, courtroom. And bid number 46-2020, East Transfer Station, building transfer station. Uh, could I get a motion and a second, motion and then we'll talk second. about Second. I have a motion and a second. Jordan, you know the drill. Go down each one, then stop. 
If anyone has any questions, we'll ask them, then we'll vote on them jointly. If anyone wants to set one of these aside and vote on it separately, we can do that. Jordan? Certainly. Starting with RFQ 12 2020, this quote is for the replacement of five sets of turnout gear for the Davis County Fire Department. We received three responsive quotes ranging from $13,525 to $15,165 and recommend pursuing the lowest quote submitted by Fire Department Service and Supply or FDSAS in the amount of $13,525. These are budgeted replacements to meet national standards. There are no exceptions and I would recommend approval. Question or comment? Next item, Jordan. RFQ 13 2020. This quote is for the emergency lighting, radio console installation, and siren outfitting packages for the two new rescue vehicles for the Davis County Fire Department. And these were from bid 27 2020 earlier this year. Uh, we received three responsive quotes ranging from $14,291.72 to $24,649.16 and recommend pursuing the lowest quote submitted by Impco Incorporated in the amount of $14,291.72. This is a budgeted project. There are no exceptions, and I would recommend approval. Commissioners, questions or comments? Jordan, the two that you just talked about have all, were all budgeted items. Yes. Okay, next item. RFQ 14 2020. This quote is to remove and replace floor slats and replace bearings and start blocks for unit number 180, which is a 2017 East Unloader walking floor trailer for the Grimes Avenue transfer station. We received two responsive quotes ranging from $15,884.01 to $18,504.22 and recommend pursuing the lowest quote submitted by Magnum Welding Incorporated in the amount of $15,884.01. This is budgeted maintenance. There are no exceptions, and I would recommend approval. Question or a comment? Jordan, we have worked with Magnum Welding before. Yes, sir. Okay, next item. RFQ 15 2020. This quote is to relocate the audio video equipment from the old location of the Emergency Operations Center, currently in the basement of the courthouse, to its new location at the Scherzinger facility. This is part of our overall departmental relocation to accommodate real ID. We received two responsive quotes ranging from $10,378 to $18,882.04 and recommend pursuing the lowest quote submitted by custom audio video in the amount of $10,378. Questions, comments? Next item. Bid number 43-2020. This bid is for the provision of one new Class A fire engine for the Mosleyville Volunteer Fire Department. We received two bids ranging from a net $284,791.70 to $296,459. We have offered a 1997 American Pumper currently housed at Mosley Village trade in consideration to offset the total purchase price. We recommend award to the lowest and best evaluated bid submitted by High Tech Rescue for the 2021 custom twin pumper exercising the trade-in option in the net amount of $284,791.70. It should be noted that the fiscal court will contribute $200,000 towards this purchase with the balance to be paid by the respective volunteer fire station. Delivery is estimated within one year. This was a budgeted replacement. There are no exceptions and I would recommend approval. Questions or comments? Is this the same outfit we bought our last volunteer fire truck from? Yes, sir. Okay. Any other questions? Jordan, I noticed that uh, it's almost a year from today, so we're gonna be getting this thing in sometimes in September probably. Yes, sir, it'll roll into the next Takes budget. Takes a while to build a big boy's toy, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, next item. Uh, bid number 45, 2020. This bid is for the renovation of the fiscal court courtroom, fiscal court office hallway, and EMA's current space that will ultimately house the coroner's office and auditor's area. We received four bids ranging from $52,900 to $81,000 and recommend award to the lowest and best evaluated bid of Lanham Brothers in the amount of $52,900. This was a budgeted project. There are no exceptions and I would recommend approval. Questions, comments? Jordan, just briefly tell us what we're gonna be doing here real quick with that bid. It will include a reorientation of the courtroom to accommodate uh, some ADA space, a media space. It'll be mostly paint and carpet through all other areas. 
going to reupholster, I think, the benches? All benches will be reupholstered. One will be cut in half uh, to accommodate a space for wheelchairs, <clears throat> move to the back, should improve seating uh, very much so. Gentlemen, if you recall, last uh, back early in the year, and last year we had several full courtrooms, and when folks came in, particularly those who needed uh, ADA assistance, it was hard. We ended up with some of them in the back of the courtroom. Mm -hmm. If we had to evacuate the courtroom real quick, they wouldn't get out very fast. So we're gonna move them to the front of the courtroom. And I think every, it's not gonna reduce the capacity of the courtroom. No, sir. Seating capacity at all. And I think it's, it's long overdue. Next item. Bid number 46, 2020. This bid is for the construction of a scale house building to replace the mobile home at the East Transfer Station on Floral Road for the Solid Waste Department. We received four bids ranging from $66,000 to $95,700 and recommend award to the lowest and best evaluated bid of Envision contractors in the amount of $66,000. This was a budgeted project. There are no exceptions and I would recommend approval. Commissioners, question or comment? You've heard all the recommendations of the purchasing aid agent. Uh, if there are no other, could, yes, sir. I'm, I'm just curious. I notice that there's four uh, RFQs and and the others are bids. How do we determine when we're going to have it be a re re request for a quote versus a bid? That is governed by our administrative code. If the cost is between the the ultimate awarded cost is between ten thousand. $19,999, we will issue an RFQ to be brought before the court for the court to make the decision. Anything over $20,000 is bid. Okay. <clears throat> and, and I think on occasion, Commissioner, we have probably bid some things that were less than $20,000, particularly if you got two really high quotes and one really low quote, we would then go ahead and ask for a bid just to make sure that we were being covered. We it's, also quote other things over a thousand dollars up right. to ten but they don't have to come to court right okay. any other questions or comments hearing none all in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. opposed <laughs> motion carries uh commissioners if i if i hear no objection i'm going to stop for just a second let people know that here in a few minutes we're going to be asking for public comment that's the time during our meeting when we will allow folks normally to approach the podium identify themselves and they're welcome to speak or question anything other than what was on the agenda. I'm gonna let folks who are watching know that right now so they'll have a, <clears throat> we're on a delay, mm -hmm. they will have a few minutes to be able to uh, ask questions. Uh, Mr. Smith will bring those questions up or are there comments up, anything that's relative to the meeting. So. Item H, hire the following seasonal interns. Under the engineering department, Dylan Payne, effective 11-30-2020. J.R. Gates, effective 12-7-2020. Jaden Bickett, effective 12-14-2020. Road department, Garrett Snyder, effective 12-7-2020. Nathan Lanham, effective 12-14-2020. Move to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second. Uh, these are seasonal interns. Usually around the Christmas break time, we'll hire college kids to come in and help out in engineering and the road department. Mark, are you still over there? He is. I do, am. You, do you have any comment? I do not. Okay. Any comment or question mm -hmm. from the commission? There being none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next item, consideration for discussion, other business to be brought before Davis County Fiscal Court. To my knowledge, we have none. We're continuing that record. And thank you, Commissioner Castlin. Two years ago, I think you were chiding us for bringing things that way. I was, and I appreciate you. Uh, we have made an effort. Thank you. We have made an effort. Item B, public comment. Uh, again, this is time during our meeting in which we will invite the public to identify themselves and, and make a comment on anything other than what was on the agenda. David, do you have anything? He's shaking his head no. Item C, comments by Davis County Fiscal Court, Commissioner Wathen. Pass. Uh, Commissioner Coger. Pass. 
Commissioner uh, Kesslin. Well, I'm just curious with the spike in in the uh, COVID cases. I know our last meeting we spoke about uh, trick or treating, and I know I didn't have any trick or treaters in my house, but but I did have. I, I saw a lot in the neighborhood, and uh, I just was curious. Does does Clay think that that had anything to do with the? It would spike be too or, early, okay. I think. Uh, I mean, you're you're talking about that was five days ago, six days ago. Mm -hmm. It would be unlikely at the time if anybody came down with it. That meant they probably had it anyway right. before they went out. So I, I we have not had a, any conversation about that. This is about the time when people who went on fall break and came back might start showing symptoms coming down. Uh, okay. uh, that would be one thing, and I think that we're seeing some outbreaks again in nursing homes. So, But it's just a, it's an indication of the spread throughout the community right. as, as that daily average goes up and the fact that we went into the red zone. I, I would tell you, and I, I use this example, um, you know, everything, they base everything on uh, 100,000 population. So today we had 53, and our population is about 100,000. Mm -hmm. If you looked at, I th I'm I'm thinking that Hancock County had five. That's correct. Uh, that's correct. I knew it was. I was just testing you. Uh, so if they had five and their population is 9,000, you divide 9,000 into 100. That's about 11. So you multiply 11 times five. They had 55 per 100,000. So, you know, it's a small county, fewer people, so they're not going to have as large a numbers, mm -hmm. but their infection rate is for that day. Gotcha. Unfortunately, McLean County had 15. They, again, you multiply that by 11, that's 165 cases in uh, per 100,000. So you, you look when you look at it, it, it's I know folks are out there going, oh, my gosh, Davis County had 53 and 53 is terrible. But you've got to look at it based on population. And and so when I, I know early on, I used to have people tell me that why is Davis County so high and these other counties are not? Well, if you if you averaged it based mm -hmm. on population, you would have found that everybody was having no spread. Uh, the good news is the number of hospitalizations, and I don't remember today's, but I know yesterday we had 11 in the hospital. And when you get 20 and 25 in the hospital, that's when you start seeing folks passing away. And our, our death rate was, I think, 32. So anyway, uh, I want to remind everybody, Commissioner Wathen, we're three weeks away from Christmas at Panther Creek. It's the Friday after Thanksgiving. Uh, I know that, uh, no pun intended, but Ross Lee and his crew have been working feverishly toward getting uh, the park ready. And it's it's really going to be neat this year. There's some new additions, new things for you to do. And this is a family fun event where you can stay as a family unit, stay in your car and, and not intermingle. Uh, as I think most of our Veterans Day programs at the schools are canceled. I, I hate that because I always enjoyed those. There are, I think, one West Little is going to have a virtual mm -hmm. uh, Veterans Day celebration. I know the Veterans Day parade was canceled. The Christmas parade was canceled. And for those who hadn't heard, uh, the city was going to host bridge lighting tomorrow night, and that has been canceled. I think they will do it virtually. It'll be online or on, on Facebook where you can, can see it. Um, I, I would just encourage everyone, uh, you know, mask up, social distance, wash your hands, and avoid large crowds. Uh, it's going to get a little bit worse, I think, before it gets a little bit better. And uh, Commissioner Wathen, we were talking about with that. Everybody is just their their COVID fatigue. I mean, they're just tired and wore out. Yep. I mean, it's just as, but it's not time for us to let our guard down. So let's soldier on, do the best we can. And until our next court meeting, which will be on the 19th, uh, everybody stay safe. Without objection, we're adjourned.